Welcome everyone to Kickstart Webinar 2. It's Thursday, March 23rd, 2017, high noon. One minute past. My name is Julia. I'm Stuart. My, I'm Jim's partner here at J. Dalton Trading. And uh, it's great to see you all. So thanks for coming out for this private webinar. As you probably well know, these webinars are designed to help Market Profile Mastery Series traders get up to speed for the May 1st start. It's also an opportunity for JD members to check it out, see if you want to uh, enroll and be a part of the program. So thank you everyone for being here. It's great to see you all. Jim has a full presentation um, today, so we're going to get right at it. We are recording this. It will be posted at the training site, training.jdaltontrading.com. Uh, more information to clarify content for all of you via email coming to your inbox soon. And um, Jim, I'm going to let you kick it off and I'll keep my screen showing. Okay. Um, we had the slides all nice and ready to go and we'll come back to those. But the uh, what we were going to talk about this morning was just being able to kind of learn what how to observe a market as it opens in the morning and the auction process. But what I decided to do first, ask Julia if she could replay today, because one of the things we say, when a market opens within range, the closer to the center of the range, usually the more volatility you're going to get. And our recommendation when that happens is unless there's some real solid reason, stay out of the market, let the market, let the market go through its chop, let it settle down, because it is a lot of people, an awful lot of traders, lose a tremendous amount of capital in the first hour, and it's both financial capital and psychological capital. And I suspect that the biggest loss uh, overall, it's a psychological capital because once that's gone, you have a tendency to do to do too many impulsive things that really aren't aren't necessary and are not productive. So anyhow, let's take a look real time this morning and see if we can replay today and really give you an example of what I'm talking about uh, for a market opening within the range. Okay, so everyone can see my window trader panel, I assume. So this is um, a recording, and I'm going to click play. Okay, so you see we opened. We go right down to right just above the point of control. We take out the overnight. No, we to a tick. We Exactly to the overnight, a low. So that's a relatively, you know, weak, uh, weak spot at this point. Market goes back up. This is real time, right? Yes. Yeah, we're playing this at real time just to give you a feel. I do speed it up eventually. Eventually, but I just wanted to give you a feel. Up here we open within range, about as close to the center as you can get to the POC to the settle. Now you can say we we spike down. We took out the overnight low, we spiked down, and see how fast the market comes back up and extends to the upside. Wow. And uh, that's an awful lot of single prints for opening in the, uh, uh, in the range. Just notice the volatility. All that spike up. And that, these, are, these are days that, that can be just just terribly destructive financially and, and, and mentally. And it's just sometimes you just need to walk away and just let the, uh, let the market settle for some period of time. So you've seen just the first, it's only, all you've seen so far is the first few minutes. And that doesn't kind of demonstrate the point I'm talking about, about the volatility um, and, and the chop. Oh, you must have speeded it up, I see. Yes. Okay, because now we're into the we're into the second period. So it leaves a two tick high. I'm 
Trades back down to half back exactly. Takes half back out, just above unchanged and the opening. Unchanged being the settle. Being the settle price would be the green circle on yesterday, not on the overnight, but the green circle from yesterday. Can you stop for just a second? Okay. Overnight inventory was 100% long. So Virtually. some of the trickiest days that you have to deal with is when overnight inventory is 100% long or short and the market does a counter action or a counter auction first, which means if overnight inventory was up, the counter auction to that would be down. That is that counter auction down is squeezing out a lot of the overnight longs, and uh, sometimes you mistake that liquidation of weak overnight longs for more serious selling in the market. And the most difficult day to trade is one where the market trades down first because of overnight inventory, then the market begins to head in the opposite direction or in the direction of overnight inventory originally. Okay, let's play just a little bit more. Okay, we're in the third period. Value, we're in, still inside. Okay, let's stop again. Okay, at this point in at this point in time, we have we do not have a good high. Okay, we do not have a good high. We are easily within striking distance of both yesterday's high as well as the overnight high. So you got to be very cautious at that at that level uh, because it likely stops there. Okay, let's play again. Okay, so now again, let's stop again. Okay, well, but I wanted to show we wanted to show you when it went up, it tagged the overnight high, and then it sold off immediately, leaving the high at that point in time at the overnight high. So again, that becomes a very questionable, uh, questionable high when that when that occurs. All right, I think we can stop. The market continues on up, and it gets very very stretched out. I don't know if it holds it throughout the day. But what we can do, we can stop here. We can go to my slides. But what I, I wanted, I wanted you to get a real feel for what can happen in that first hour, and how how easy easily it is to get chopped up, and like I say, lose a lot of self confidence and um, and and money at the same time. And it's really a terrible way to you know to start a day. Okay, now we're going to go back. Well, first of all, before we leave, before we go to the slides, any questions relative to only what we saw as Julia was replaying the day? Hold on, Mr. Um. Wasn't this simply Jim's look below the overnight? Well, I'm just interjecting overnight, but look below the low and fail trade. I, I don't think so. I mean, I can understand in hindsight. In hindsight, that's what it looked like. Looked over the overnight low and traded higher. Um, I when when the volatility that was going on this morning, I just said I'll stay away until it comes clearer than that. If in fact you want to, if he looks below the low and comes back in, and if you want to make, if you want to go and take that trade, that is fine. Then what you don't want to have happen is you don't want the market to come back uh, to that low. And uh, you know, so again, it's it's a everybody's going to trade differently than I do. It is a legitimate trade. Looks pretty old overnight. If you want to do a trade to go long when it comes back into the overnight range with the destination train 
trade being the other extent of the other end of the uh, the overnight range. It's a legitimate trade. You know how to manage the trade. You manage the trade two ways. First of all, you're, if you're using futures, your stop is going to be just below the original low. You know when it looked down below the overnight. Then to manage the trade on the upside, you want you want the market to start to show some elongation. Jim, you want to take out yesterday's high. You want to take out the overnight high, and you want to see to accelerate from that level, which it did today. Jim, okay. Other questions? Could you show your window trader window, please? Okay. A question here. Was the B period inside bar, maybe slide that up a little bit, yeah. Was the B period inside bar a, a go with trade? It's certainly, it's certainly acceptable. It's certainly an acceptable trade. Um, it's probably not, I mean, I'm just being honest. It's probably not a trade I would have done uh, because it was, you know, so close to the high. But again, I'd rather see it take the high. But again, at that point, if you're going to do that, if you're going to take the breakout in the C period, then no. your stop's going to be, you know, about a quarter of the third way back into the B period range. Yes, right? yes, and trade location wasn't on your side, but that's all relative to your trading style. Yeah, well, then and you have to manage for, You can take a lot of these trades as long as you know how to manage for continuation. And the first, I'm sorry, that phone, that's a house phone. The first thing that you manage a trade is via time. So when you, if you're going to do that breakout from B period with the C period, you want it to get through yesterday's high and through the overnight high quickly, and you want it to extend. So wow. it's a legitimate trade. Again, I probably wouldn't have done the trade today just because I wasn't mentally ready because I, the, there was so much volatility going on. I was mentally prepared just to sit back and, and watch. Okay? Okay. Um, is today's acceptance above the previous day point of control high confidence? No, all I, I don't want to do that now. All I want to talk about is questions relative to what we talked about this morning and then go out to the slides. I, I don't want to be, this is a kickstart thing, so I don't want to be all over the lot. Yeah, okay? and it, it's not really a metric we use to measure confidence necessarily with the point of control. But, um, John, you're always welcome to call me uh, later if you want to get an answer to your question. Okay, um, then I guess we'll do the slides, and I won't ask any more questions for the time being. Okay. Okay. Again, remember, there's a kickstart program, and I want to just, I want to get people comfortable with how to look at a market from, from the opening, using a profile, how to look at the market from the opening. When we're looking at this right now, I'm using no context to go with it. I'm not talking about what the trend was or any other of those metrics. I'm simply trying to give a feel of what to look for as a day opens. So in the current first slide, again, we see a market that opens within the previous day's range. And as we just saw, when we open within the previous day's range, I generally will just sit back and uh, you know, say, well, if I miss some trades, I miss some trades. Um, a lot of times we do, when we're doing webinars or uh, intensives or master series, I'll ask Joy to get a read from people. How many people have traded already? How many people have traded more than two or three times? And it is amazing to me how many people early on will have traded three and four times for the day. And then if I, if I go back and I ask, I find that those pe people generally are not profitable. It takes a lot of patience. So the look first slide here, we open within range. We have an extremely narrow range. A period is very narrow. B period is very narrow. 
Patience is your greatest asset at this point. Okay? So very narrow. And when I see something this narrow, the, the thing I always say, the, the hair on the back of my, hairs on the back of my neck are usually standing straight out because I see a potential opportunity. If you want to go with this breakout from this short-term balance, you can. It's a legitimate trade. The narrower the range is, the less likely that that range is going to hold. So at this point in time, it, in C period, the market does break to the downside. It goes down and it takes out, it takes out the poor low from the previous day, but price is rejected. If you're going to do this trade, if you did this breakout, this when this takes out the low and it doesn't carry to the downside, you've got to be out of that trade. Okay? So again. This is just, you're watching a day, it's very narrow, you get a breakout to the downside, it gets rejected, it, looking below the previous day's low, once it gets rejected, the potential is a trade, an auction, back to the opposite extreme of the previous day's range. Now that doesn't mean it's going to go there. Doesn't mean it's going to go there, but that's kind of the potential you would be looking for. And then, what you're looking at, you say, well, as the market goes along, you look at what do I think the chances are that we can make that object, uh, objective of the other extreme. Okay? Any questions before I go to the next slide? I think we're looking good, Jim. Okay. Thanks. All right, so you see what happens. We got rejected. The market um, in D period comes on up. Now, what I want you to notice, we are already four wide in here. So, again, that may not mean much, but it, it's something you certainly want to keep, keep an eye on. That's awfully wide early in the morning to have anything substantial going on uh, for the day. Okay, so now E period rallies higher. Remember, it's aiming at it's aiming at the previous day's high. That's the that's the destination trade. Because it's one wide up here, and if you look at this, it's going to be four wide, five wide down here. It is difficult, not impossible. But it is difficult to get away from a profile or a market structure that is already five wide. Usually, if it's going to continue higher, with this being five wide down here, it's going to have to really accelerate, and you're going to likely need to see a double distribution day. In other words, blow away today's early distribution and go to a second totally new and fresh distribution. So before we go to the next slide, you know, what happened, here's what happens to you mostly. You can look down, whoops. You can you can say, oh boy, you got let's say you got long down here and that's not too bad and D period goes up and E period, E period goes, and, wow, I got a pretty good trade. It's moving pretty fast. Now a lot of times people say, well, you know, Jim says he's thinking in terms of odds. I'm not sure I know what that means. Well, in, when I look at this and I say it's just five wide, the odds of being able to show a lot of extension from this being five wide are going to be pretty difficult. Now, I don't expect you to take that at, you know, straight, well, oh, Jim said it. What I want you to do is Learn to observe those things on your own because the only time you're going to get confidence in how to trade a market and what's really going on is when you have observed it on your own. Just because somebody told you something, there's a tremendous amount of bad information out there. And you know, and I get some too sometimes. So I'll just show you things to look at 
and how to look at the market, how to think about the market, and you make you see if that makes any sense. So when we look at this, I'm saying five wide, it's difficult for it to have a whole lot of extension to the upside. Not impossible. If it does extend, more than likely then it would be a double distribution day, which means it blows away one distribution, there's ends up with single prints between this distribution and the next, and then the market continues higher. Okay? So now we go up, and we see E period price was rejected, and sorry, for the remainder of the day, we come back down to the center of the of the range. Remember my comment early long about being five Y. It did get pulled back there. And it tried to when it tried to go lower in G and H period. By that time it was the same thing's going to be on the upside because it's five wide up here. And then we settle in the day just about in the middle of the of the range. Okay, now I picked a very calm day to start with just to kind of walk you through some basic principles of Again, all we're trying to do is have some idea, once the market opens, how do I look at a market using a market profile to have some idea how to view what is going on that day. Okay. Before I go to the next set of slides, questions on what we talked about so far, please. Okay. How long does one wait to find out if there is no follow through? Should it be immediate or do you wait till the next 30 minute bar? No, I never do anything automatic. I never, you know, never in my mind am I wait for the next 30 minute bar. I'm, it's a combination. I'm watching how it went up and I'm watching for tempo. But remember here, you know, the factors, so you, your question is, do I wait for the next 30 minute bar? That's a kind of a mechanical question. And if you think what I was talking about, remember it was already five wide down here in D period when it extended four up. Four wide, isn't it? No, oh, I'm sorry, four wide. Um, and it, well, E period, when E period uh, extended up. Yes, sir. It was five wide. And at that point, when I think of the odds, uh, if it doesn't carry through to the upside pretty quickly, I'm going to be fairly intolerant simply because I know if it's that wide before it extends an E period, I know it's going to have to really have some pizzazz in order to continue higher. If that market fades at all, I'm out from an odd standpoint because the chances are it's going to get pulled back simply because the structure, it had spent too much time in that level. If the market really had confidence in the morning, you don't spend a lot of time. And so you, confidence was low, we tried to go lower, we tried to go higher. So it wasn't, and it doesn't try to go higher till the, you know, the third, fourth period, fifth period. So at that time, it's not high confidence day anyhow by the amount of time that it took to get there. Okay, other questions? I have when C period took out the prior day lows and didn't follow through on the first try, where does Jim take the short trade off? Right after the C period enters back into the prior day's range or giving it some more room for the short trade to play out? Thanks. Okay. It's another, and I'm sorry, it's another mechanical question that if I gave you an answer to that question, it would not be an honest answer. We're talking about in real trading, when that takes out that C period low, what is factored in? It's factored in how much tempo it had going down there. And I'm factored in, I'm factoring in, you know, what happens once it, once it goes back that low, takes out that low, and if it doesn't continue pretty quickly, I'm gone. I'm, I'm gone. There's a lot of real trading is an awful lot of being able to internalize a lot of things. One of the things that you haven't learned yet is tempo. And but when that mark goes down, sometimes the tempo could be too fast with me, whoom. Sometimes it's too slow. If you're grinding down here, tempo's fairly slow. And once you get once you get below this, 
and if you don't take it out, you're out of the trade. You don't worry about the price. I don't know if you remember the other day, I was talking about what it used to be like on the floor of exchange. So on the floor of exchange, if C period was going down near the low from the previous day, picture your hands in front of you. Picture the palms being face out, out away from your face. So the palms are forward. So if the market, if this was a floor and the market were going was going down near yesterday's low, the brokers would be selling. And once you took out that low, if it got very quiet, the broker's hands would immediately reverse and the palms would be facing them. And when the palms are facing them, that means they're buyers. If when it took out that low, the volume increased, the hands would stay palms out and they would continue to sell because lower prices were bringing in more activity, not less activity. So that is what you have to feel as a trader, as a short-term trader. Remember, one of the things that I have stressed so often is there's no formulas to this. You have to be able to read the flow of the market and you're up against really big time competitors and people that have been around for years. As I've said so many times, we don't have practice courts. And paper trading really doesn't get you where you need to go um, because you have to feel that emotion. That emotion makes all the difference in the world. So we're coming out of this narrow, I'm sorry, every time I move the mouse it can Okay, so if you have to feel it comes out of that narrow range, so already you know confidence is rel relatively low to begin with because for two periods we didn't do anything. So you, you factor in if confidence was really high, we're not going to be that narrow. All of a sudden the market gets a break, and when it gets that break in C period, it's got to it's got to do it and hold it below the previous day's low pretty quickly, or you want out. And it's not a price. It's not a pricing. It's just a reaction type of thing. I, I, I you know, I know it, 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 people would love more concrete answers. They'd have a lot more comfortability if I gave them a concrete answer. But the truth is, it's not the way it works. Okay. Additional questions. Yes. I could be wrong, but I haven't seen Jim mention about the New York Stock Exchange volume yet. Does he still factor this in? Hi, Thurston. Yes, I do. Yeah, go to the and I, you know, and I, I, I'm always trying to keep in my mind what is average over the last ten days. So you know, when I'm looking at this in the morning, I factor it in. But when I a day like this, I probably I know if volume is low, I probably wouldn't have even checked the volume on this. You know, because by the time I go and check the volume. As we've taken this out, it's it's probably too late. Once I'm here, I'm I'm looking pretty quickly to see does this have momentum below the low or not. Um, if the market was trending up, say trending up for four or five periods in the morning, and now I'm looking at the volume to see you know are we getting more volume or less volume. Um, but in this case, I probably wouldn't have even looked. Okay, another question on the breakdown out of A and B period, when that failed and C came back in from below, would Jim feel comfortable going from short to long? You may want to show Probably you. Probably not. If, if I was going to, number one, I seldom reverse a trade. And if I've been short, it is rare that I will go from short to long without at least having five minutes in between. When I you know, think I'm getting cute and I go from short to long, and I've done it, but what happens when you do that, normally your emotional level is very high. And at that point in time, you're not really sure how much of, you know, how much, how much thinking and how much just emotional reaction is in there. Um, so it's again, it's a personal choice. If I'm going to trade, if I'm going to go this trade, when this trade, if I am short, or if I've not been been short, 
and this market comes back in, okay, if I go long, then my stop is going to be, then I'm going to say, okay, I don't want to get back down below yesterday's low again. I want it to go. Now, you've got to be a little careful on that because it's not always that exacting. Let me let me give you an ex um, let me give you an example. Yesterday, when we were on the webinar yesterday, you may remember that as soon as C period took out the B period low, I bought calls. I had bought calls. Some people might have done it with futures. And at that point in time, the market rallied, but before the market did its final rally, it came back down there one more time. It came back there one more time. And a lot of people get too nervous, and they would have gotten stopped out. So last yesterday, I was buying this once it the, the uh, calls, once I took the low out, market rallied, but then it came back down through there. And a lot of times, people will panic and get out, and they'll see a worst case scenario. So that is not uncommon that the market's got that kind of volatility, it comes back and, and tests the low again, maybe even takes it out for another tick. So it, it's a difficult situation. It, the emotions will be very high, but you generally have to give, have a little patience. And you, if you're using futures, you have to, your stop has to be loose enough that the market has that chance to do that. One of the things we haven't talked about yet because we're just early in the process, but one of the reasons that traders have losses is because they keep their stops too tight. And when you have an early stop in tight, mentally you think you're being prudent because you think you are really controlling your risk. The truth of the matter is markets aren't that exacting. And traders that use tight stops have a tendency to get stopped out an awful lot. And these, these stop outs add up over a period of time because you've got a small loss in the trade, you've got the commissions, um, and it takes a lot of energy out of you. So I, I think one of the biggest failures, one of the biggest reasons Traders, traders that might have made it otherwise, don't make it. It's because they're they're control trying to control their risk too tightly, and you just it's just not a wise thing to do. You know you're going to do what you want to do, but it's it's something to think about. And look as you look at the market, say you know how much volatility is there. Well, I'm at it. Another thing that that traders do that's probably one of the worst things possible is they'll they'll let's say they buy something, the market goes up. And, and they're profitable, and they now move their stop to where they got in. They move it into break even. And they rationalize, well, you know, I'm in a great trade. I can't lose anything. Well, you ha there was no structural reason for putting the stop at break even. The only reason you did that was because it made you feel better psychologically. And that is not a reason. To, if you're going to make money, You've got to be able to read the structure of the market. You have to have a market or structural reason, you know, or tempo reason, in order to exit or stay with the trade. Anyhow, another question before we go on to the next slides. We're good now. Okay. Let me just see what the market's doing today. Okay. All right. I'm um, going to move on. Okay, then, um, okay. The, next, the next example I went through, and I, in this case, I took an opening within range, but at the lower end of range. Remember when, I show, when we went back live and Julia showed you, we played today's opening, it was in the middle of the range. In the middle of the range, you usually get uh, more volatility, or more chop like we did this morning. 
when you open near either extreme of the range, um, you've got to be a little more alert. When I open about the center of the range, I usually sit back and just relax. When I'm opening near the lower extreme or upper extreme, you know, I'm close to being in or out of balance, then I will be, I will be a, little, a little more careful um, on the market and what I do. And uh, I, because I may have to act quicker. So in this example, the market opens in range. It's within the lower quadrant. Overnight inventory has been 100% um, short. This was the settle from the previous day. Overnight high, overnight inventory is 100% short. And the market, by the time the market opens, we're all the way back up towards the um, overnight high. Market opens, goes a little bit higher, and then it sells off. So now we're out of range. We are now out of range. Okay? And there's two up. When the market goes out of range, you usually have big opportunities. Either the market continues out of range, or it fails to hold that and reverses. So if we look at this yesterday, and remember, this was yesterday. I'm not showing any or talking about any context, because I had context yesterday. But all I'm trying to do is just, again, get an idea how to watch a market. So the market opens. It trades out of range. It fails to take out the overnight low. It fails to take out the overnight low. Um, but at this point in time, Value is, at this point, a value would be building lower. We're a couple periods pretty wide, and B period continues. And so this time, we really don't, we really don't know, um, at this point in time, what we're dealing with. It. We're up to the downside. If you've gone with that to the down, to that trade to the downside, then I think you don't want it to reenter the previous day's range, at least not by much. Okay, so that's what we're looking at. C period comes along. C period extends lower. It fails to take out the overnight. It fails to take out the overnight low. So now, as that fails to take, if if you are short, and you're talking about exiting a trade. Some of the things to you know, if you're short and there's going to be a problem with that trade, more than likely that problem is going to occur near a fairly visual reference. And of course the overnight low is a very visual reference. So if I'm coming down, remember it didn't easily, B period tried it. B period, you remember, rallied back up exactly to the overnight uh, to the previous day's low, um, which is information I was using yesterday. But in this case, C comes back down. It does not take out the overnight low. And at that point in time, you know, you've you've tried it for three periods going down to the overnight low. You haven't gotten it out. Like I say, if you're short, if you're going to have a problem, more than likely that problem is going to be at a very visual reference. And that's exactly, if you were short yesterday, that's exactly where the problem came in, at a very visual reference. So we know yesterday, but the market then, you know, we look below the overnight. Excuse me, I'm sorry, my, my hands touch the, uh, the, the mouse and it does strange things. So the market fails at the overnight low. If, as a short-term trader, you want to go long there, then your stop's going to be someplace below the overnight low. Then the question is, how do I monitor for continuation? So, number one, you want to take out the B period high. The B period high also is the, uh, the low from the previous day. So, if you've got anything on the upside, you need to re-enter the previous day's range and then you need to have the market extend higher, and you need to get back above the unchanged level. So again, 
This is a market, remember, it opened within range. It was near the lower quadrant. And I said, I'm a little more prepared, mentally prepared, if I open on one extreme or the other of the profile, because it's I'm probably going to have more volatility, and I'm probably going to have bigger opportunities. So in this case, the market did go down. It failed at the overnight low. It was a visual place for a long. Um, it's a place to cover a short. It's a place for a long. Um, and you're, if you're wrong futures, you've got a place you want to have the stop right below the overnight low. Now, again, remember what we're talking about there. I'm not talking about any context. When we talked about it yesterday, I was, I was surrounding yesterday's range with context, which is, of course, a totally different situation. But um, what I'm just trying to do, walk you through today is just how, when a market opens in the morning, it starts to trade. How do you just view the profile kind of context-free? Okay. Any questions before I go to the next slide? Nope. We're good. Julia, am I holding the noise down, or are you still getting all that noise from my chair? No, it's better. Thanks. Okay. Any questions, or should I go on? No questions. Okay, I'll go on. If any que other questions pop up, you know, we can come back to them then. Oh, you didn't hear me? I said no, no questions. No, I didn't. What did you say? No questions. Oh, okay. Well, actually, one just came on now. To go long in C period below B, when would it confirm to go long? You would wait to see the tempo slowing down? Again, it's, it's, remember, I've had A period try and take out the low. I had B period try and take out the low. And now I have C period try and take out the low. So, it's, you know, it, there's no exact answer to it. Obviously, if the tempo is really, really strong on the downside, I'm not going to go there. But more than likely, tempo has, has been slow down there and is grinding, and you're looking at that visual reference, and it's not taking it out. One of the things that happens to traders is they, you have two, two things. You have traders that make too many impulsive trades, and then you've got traders that wait too long and find continual reasons not to do a trade. And there's a balance in between. You know, when you get down, when, I, when I'm looking at the C period, one of the, one of the things going through my rip, going to go through my mind, is I, I know the market's now been open, you know, over an hour. It hasn't been able to take out the overnight low. And at this point in time, if I buy it someplace close to that low, my risk is fairly small. My risk is fairly small because I can have a stop fairly close underneath the overnight low. So it's a, a fairly tight stop. So my risk is relatively minor, and my reward is potentially quite a bit larger. So I'm going to look at the market overall. I'm going to look at tempo. I'm going to look, I'm going to be factoring in what do I think? Do I think the amount of risk that I have to take on this trade? is worth what the potential reward going forward is. These are all things that as, as you gain experience, you begin to internalize. But it's, it's one of the things that, that I say very often. You can manage risk. You can't manage reward because you don't know what the market's going to do once it gets on. But you can manage your risk. And a lot of times, Traders don't do an adequate job of managing their risk. There's too much, too much emotion gets involved. Down here, the, the risk is relatively small. But you have to separate yourself from all that uh, gyrations that are going on in the market and, you know, auctioning lower. Remember what you've seen. You've seen A period, B period, and C period trading lower. So what your mind has seen is price going lower for better than an hour. And now what you're asking yourself to do 
is be able to fly in the face of what you've seen for over an hour, which is the market going lower. So a lot of things, it's, it's easy now when you, when you look at it on a graphic and it's nice and slow and we're talking about it and so, oh yeah, I can see it buy down near that low. Well, that's fairly simple now and we know it worked. But when the market's trading down there and it's all you've mentally seen for over an hour and now you have to go against what you've just seen, that is not an easy trade to do. I will say a lot of times the best trades fly in the face of the most recent market activity. And that's usually on a, on a situation where, you know, it's not a rip-roaring trend day uh, of like that. But very often, um, that is how you, you're looking to trade situations like this. So there's a lot of things involved about, you know, do you go long in C period down there? And when would you go, when you go long? You know, when can you mentally pull the trigger? But the last thing I mentioned was you want to be thinking about how much risk do I have for the potential reward? That has an awful lot to do with if you decide to take the trade or not. Additional question. B and C periods yesterday, there was a lot of chop going up and down several times. Very hard to pick the bottom. I think the operative phrase there is pick the bottom, personally. And a question or a comment? It's a question from someone. B and C periods yesterday, there was a lot of chop going up and down several times. Very hard to pick the bottom. It's a, I guess it's a comment, but if you want to comment on that. I mean, we're not trying to pick the bottom, you know, so. First of all, I'll, I'm going to answer that question in a second. But when you come down, and remember, today we're not addressing, we're just saying how to look at a market. But now I will go back into the context from yesterday. And I'm going to add context to yesterday. So remember yesterday that the B period high was exactly at the low from the previous day. So that meant that the sell-off in B period came from a very mechanical level. And more than likely, when it comes from a mechanical level, that is going to be uh, weaker hands trading. Long-term, smarter money, there's no way they're going to wait for you know an exact price to sell. That is only done by uh, very short-term traders uh, that are going to act in that manner. And it's very important to understand who you are competing against. So we also, we also know that we had a prominent point of control up here that had not been revisited from yesterday. And we have a market that's trying to take this, trying to take this out and not doing a very good job of it. So again, now we add context to it. And the context to it, I mean, you saw me make the, you saw me make the buy down there yesterday. Um, by, by the call, well, I don't know if you saw me, but, but I bought the calls as soon as the market, C period, took out B period, and I did it as it was going lower. And, but I had context surrounding it that allowed me to do that trade. And um, so, so context is so important. If you're, when you're reflecting on all the chop, that is a lot of times you're too focused on just price. And what, uh, one of the mistakes people make is they have up uh, shorter term bar charts, they have um, ladders and they're looking at bids and the offers and, and everything else. They've got themselves so focused on tiny pieces, pieces, of, pieces of information that they lose the bigger perspective of what's, what's going on. Yes, there's a lot of chop. You add context to it, yeah, it's a different situation. Remember, if there's a lot of chop and you're not comfortable, you don't have to trade. Never trade unless you're comfortable with the trade. However, if the answers are already known, if you're already if it's an assured thing and it's always known, it's not going to be a very good opportunity. You know, it just doesn't work that way. The best trades will you'll be nice, you'll be in or you'll be one of the fewer people taking that trade. Okay, um, let's go on to the next slide. 
Okay, so we saw um, we saw C period, we saw D period take out uh, the settle or the unchanged from the day before, and we saw the market accelerate to within one tick of the point of control. That, if the market, because it was a prominent point of control on the previous day, and the market's coming from down below the overnight low, the logical, the logical place, if you are long, the most you can hope for, I mean, you may do, do a lot more, but one of the things would be, you know, you coming back to the fairest price at which business was being done on the previous on the previous day. Remember, I said if you were if you were short, and once you get down near the uh, the low of the overnight trade, if there's overnight range, if there's going to be a problem, more than likely that's where it's going to be. So the odds I say come out of your short. If it breaks through and you know extends to the other side, go ahead, put the short back on. Um, that's fair, that professional traders do that all the time. They'll come out of a short, you know, where the where it's the highest risk, and there's actually they see more risk being short above the low than they do being short below it because all of a sudden you have some new kind of auction taking place. When you get long, coming back to the fairest price from the previous day is a logically about the, the best you can hope for. It may go way through and give you the outside day, but that doesn't happen very often. If there's going to be a problem, it's more than likely going to be up someplace up around yesterday's fairest price. And of course, as you saw, that was that was where it um, where it stopped yesterday. It was just under that. Now one of the things that we talked about um, People ask, was well, that a is this a weak high because it was a tick below that? I said, I think my answer was, I'm not enamored with that high. It was kind of a wishy-washy answer because I wasn't 100 percent sure, but I knew I wasn't in love with it. Uh, but then the market, then the market came down. Um, you know, you got the inside bar, left a little high, and then you got a break. You got a, a break from the inside bar, and incidentally. If you, as a short-term trader, this is a when you come out of the inside bar in E period, that is a legitimate trade to the downside, and then you stop someplace back up in the E period bar. It's a legitimate. It's a legitimate trade. Okay. So at that point in time, but you you don't want to. You don't want if you're short, if you're short from here with a questionable high. If you get your trade to the downside, where you break out an F period, you really don't want to kid yourself at holding around for the home run. You may miss one, but the odds are, because it went to such a mechanical level, if you get short from that level and you get a spike down, you want to take that spike because the odds say that that wasn't, really wasn't a wonderful, it really wasn't a wonderful uh, um, high. You know, I thought it might hold, I wasn't sure. Um, but I know it wasn't something I was enamored with, and I knew that it was affecting the odds of any trades to the downside, saying I didn't expect, you know, really to carry through a lot to the downside because of that questionable point. So now we inside bar, we go F, G, so you, you know, um, and you get down near the previous day's low, and uh, it, you find the H takes out a lot of volatility yesterday, a lot of volatility, you know, in that market. But keep in mind, by the time H takes this out, we are one, two, three, four, five, six Y. It's going to be hard. It's going to be hard to move too far away from a market that's that wide. More than likely, you're going to have rotation. Um, okay. Questions just to what we've talked about right here. Yes. The B and C low also lined up 
with the February 14 high and February 15 through 17 lows. Do you have a comment for him about that observation? Absolutely, yeah, it, it's there. It's a very mechanical, it's a very mechanical level. There are, now there are two highs, an overnight low and yesterday's low at that level. So it is a very, it is a very questionable place, but that's where, that's where the market stopped. Now, one of the other things that I said in this, in this market, even though we had that big break the other day, I said, if you remember if you were on yesterday, I said, I don't see any indication of serious money on the sell side of this market. Okay? I mean, yes, we had a little higher volume the day before, but I see liquidation. I don't see so far, I don't see evidence of new, longer, stronger term selling coming into the market. So that is also, so again, when I see that, who remains in control of the market? The short-term traders remain dominating dominating the market in there. So um, that's something else to crank in um, in this market. Yes, that's a, I, I, I very much marked that low. I'm very much carrying that low forward down there because you know we break that we could get another leg to the downside but for right now it's there and what happens some people do they just get mesmerized by that and they couldn't take a long they couldn't take a long because they see that as such a questionable place I see it as very vulnerable but that's not going to stop me from short-term trading okay another question before we go on I think we're all set okay so now, once you have this, you're, you're, um, you have a point of control. It's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten wide. Uh, I guess that's at, at the market closed. Um, it's going to be very hard to get away from, from this. We do rally up late in the day, and we take out the D period high. We take out the D period high and no real follow through. If you were on the market yesterday, in the webinar yesterday, one of the things that I mentioned is I took the long down here, I said, and it wasn't something I intended to do as the market opened, I let the trade come to me. And the reason the trade came to me was all of a sudden, it wasn't taking that low, but I saw the, the B period high being exactly at the low for the previous day, which caught my attention, at a prominent point of control up here that hadn't been uh, revisited, and this market was really struggling to the downside. So as far as I was concerned, that was a situation that the trade came to me, and it wasn't a trade that I was anticipating doing. But so many times, and this is a really fine point. So many times you'll find yourself out there looking for a trade. And if you are out there looking for a trade, more than likely you're going to find one. May not be a good one, probably won't be. When part of what you're trying to do is get to the point where you recognize when the trade comes to you. That trade came to me yesterday morning it wasn't something I was looking for. I thought my I thought it was over in the day. I said, okay, I've had a decent day. Late in the afternoon, I was talking to Julie about this later, late in the afternoon when L period looked above D and no real follow through, my point of control was down down here. I did a late I did a late short in the market. And I took that when the market got back to about the point of control, just a little bit above it, I took that short off wasn't a trade I was planning to do, but the trade came to me. And like I say, it looked above the early morning high, which we said was questionable to begin with. Nothing once it took that out. And there was a lot of chop in here. It went down, it went up, it went down, it went up. So it was a lot of chop. I was pretty uneasy for a period of time. And then finally, you know, after the, the, the regular session closed, it was coming down, the regular session closed, it spiked it down, and it allowed me to get out of the trade with a, you know, a very nice little little trade, but again, I let 
to trade come to me. Very important concept. Also, I'm looking yesterday, I'm saying, okay, um, value was overlapping to lower, so no real change yesterday um, in there. Um, so I, can, I don't have a lot of prejudice coming in to today. Um, I am aware that the point of control, and I think it's a pretty good chance we come down to the point of control again today, um, you know, which we did as we saw the opening this morning. Okay, and then, so, but once you get, once this gets fatter, then more than likely you're going to get rotation and you're looking to see, do you get any migration upward or downward of the POC? So we ran up, we ran down POC trade stated right here. Remember, another way to think about it, fairest price at which business is going to be conducted. The market, you know, ran up late and pulled it back to that fairest price. Okay, other questions? We're looking good. Okay. Um, now, the, somebody asked this, bef this for, before, and it's my last chart in here. And, you know, it is, there are a, a low, a low, a overnight low, and yesterday's low, all around this 23, 32 uh, and a quarter range. This is well marked on my chart, and I'm, I'm carrying that forward. Now, here's a, here's a question. Some will say, well, you know, do you wait till it goes through this? Maybe, maybe not. Let me show you how you might use that. Let's say that tomorrow or someday opens higher, and you just see that market's got conviction and it's a trend day to the downside. It's really starting to ramp up. Don't wait for it to take this out. Get on board. And that's your destination, and it's going to have a pretty high odds of taking out next time it gets down there. So you don't have to wait. If you got a day that all of a sudden it opens, say, right up in here someplace, and it really looks confidence to the downside, you may want to lean into that trade with a pretty good idea. You're going to hit this and really get some stops underneath it. Um, again, it's just how do we use how do you use that? How do you think about it? We use the term carrying information forward. I am carrying this reference forward every time I do, every time I do my preparation for the following day. Okay, let's uh, let's stop here. Again, the purpose today was just to was just to give those people that are fairly fresh to the process or maybe totally new to it or those that want to review before getting involved in the mastery series just a refresher the refresher today was just how to kind of think about a market once the market opens the profile builds and what kind of things to be looking at at the profile itself Again, we were we did creep in with some content in here simply because we had uh, um, we had other uh, memories from yesterday. The purpose wasn't to bring content into this. The purpose here was just to show you how to look at a day, how to think about a day a little bit. Remember, this is this is two of the seven Kickstart programs. What we said is they'll get more difficult as we advance towards the May opening of the Mastery Series. So right now, the other day, we looked at the auction process. We looked at the auction process, in the overall continuous two-way auction process. We said the market profile records the two-way auction process. Remember, the profile itself does not tell you to buy or sell. I am not a profile trader. I simply use the profile to organize the data. Using that data, you saw I take it from the market opening in the morning to see what is what does it look like it's developing as a result of the market's continuous two-way two auction process. So that's all we've done. Um, so also as uh, in the master's program, those that are line, and those that have been members. We'll, for right now, we'll put out one weekend report, perspective for the week. 
we'll update it mid, update that midweek. So I'll do a Tuesday night report for Wednesday morning. Um, each of these reports will have at least three scenarios. So you, the worst thing that can happen to a trader is a trader that comes in in the morning with only one thought in mind. Uh, you may get lucky, but over a long period of time, um, that's going to be pretty difficult to be successful with. Um, so we'll have those scenarios, and then we watch to see how they um, how they play out. All right, so um, you can see any questions before we leave here. And this is all the things that leading up to the start on uh, on May first. So if you're okay. not already a member, you're not already a member. Um, in here, um, these are basically for the people that have signed up for the Mastery Series as well as a refresher for prior uh, clients. We do believe, just like American Express says, we do think that membership has its privileges. Uh, other questions before we sign off? Yes, we do have a couple of questions, but I want to make everyone aware that Peter Resnicek at Shadow Trader is hosting Jim Dalton in an impromptu webinar to discuss the current market conditions and how Jim is seeing them. So that starts at 4.30 p.m. Eastern Daylight Time today. It will be, the registration link is at shadowtrader.net. And... Um, if you uh, you know, cut out there. there was, it's happened a couple of times. Uh, Shadowtrader.net. Sorry about that. My, my data feed must be bogging down this connection. I just want everyone to be aware that Shadow Trader is hosting Jim today at 4.30 Eastern Daylight Time. If you'd like to attend, go to Shadowtrader.net and register and uh, shoot you can send me an email if you don't have it. Please go to Shadow Trader first and grab it for yourself. But if you can't find it, email me and I'll make sure you get it. Or, of course, you could email Peter at Shadow Trader. And I can get to the it is a repeat. It is a repeat of the, uh, the webinar I did yesterday. And uh, so, you know, you, you hear the same thing again. And there's usually a lot of value hearing it twice. Um, hearing it twice usually... Other things will click because I present it a little differently each time, or maybe you'll look at it differently. So there's usually a lot of value in that. Before okay. we leave... We have some questions. Take, pardon? We have some questions, if we could, because we didn't ask questions after the final of your presentation. Oh, okay. We Go ahead. a couple of questions. Any chance today could be a P, then what for tomorrow if it is? Okay. So when I'm looking, I was just going to say, today, um, notice how stretched out this was. This looked to me to be very stretched out. We now have left a poor high again. And sometimes poor highs are left because the market gets too long. So traders, you had a short covering rally. It looked like a short covering rally the way it, it moved this morning. And the market moved up very quickly, very thin. and that's almost too thin to, to hold the day. So we are, we are seeing a very, very difficult trading markets recently, a tremendous amount of emotion in there. Uh, but it's, you know, this, this day has broken down considerably. We're now at, at half back. And yeah, I do think it's a, it's a P. And a P formation, that is just, it's a sign of short covering. What happens is the shorts are buying like crazy. Slightly longer traders are very commonly, as the shorts are panicking to buy, to cover, and some momentum players are, are obviously going long too. More serious is money up there. Remember, palms out saying, you bought some, you bought some. And that's what the P formation, that's why it stops like that. It goes up, there are sellers waiting for it. Again, it is a very low confidence environment with another poor high, now we're getting liquidation. It is a difficult market to trade. Okay. okay. One more question, and I'm going to Ooh, say thank you. We have a couple. Okay. Yesterday's low was a weak low because it was to one tick above the overnight low. Did you consider that as this day progressed? It's in my head. Yes, it is. Yeah, it is. And again, 
you, you know, but here's the problem. You can take a weak low like yesterday, and you it can take some people, and it'll get, keep them from doing anything. They'll just freeze. Oh, that weak low from yesterday. It is, I put it out of my mind. I mean, I know it's there. I put it out of my mind until all of a sudden the market looks like it's got a shot to go back down there. Then I play for it much, much harder. Um, okay? Okay. This may be an advanced slash non-relevant question to the webinar, but is it possible to have multiple ruling reasons in different time frames that conflict? I'm, it's right, you're, we, we lost you for a second. Oh, gosh. Is it possible to have multiple ruling reasons in different time frames that conflict? Yeah. Of, of, of course it is. It's very unkind. A ruling reason is just, you know, you look at all these things and one reason you do something. I'll talk about that more in the advanced, if we get to the advanced sessions. It's very easy. You can easily have a market that's trending up in a counter auction, you know, with an intermediate term trend to the downside. So, I mean, those different time frames, different reasons. Um, today, I think what happened, we got, we got a lot of short covering in here this, in this morning. All right, let me say uh, thank you. I'll be on with uh, Peter uh, tonight and a replay of yesterday. Okay. Are you trying to answer one, ask one more? Yeah, it's my MO. It's hard to break habits. May I ask a question about today's developing session? Today we seem to be building time near the highs. Might there be anything to infer from that? In contrast, yesterday the point of control didn't move higher up in the range. Today is a nothing. I don't know how to, you know, some days you just don't understand. Today you, you, got, you got short covering early. It looks like they got too long. You're getting liquidation now. Um, it's just a very low confidence environment. You know, some days you, you don't always understand if everything's not as clear as you'd like it to be on a lot of days. And this is a very difficult day. Um, you know, you've got, a, you, you've got a market that's short covering. They, they sold into it. Now you're getting liquidation. And what you don't want to do is drive yourself crazy on a market that, that is a very difficult low confidence environment market. Remember all that chop we had early? That chop has continued. All right. Thank okay, you very one, much. One thing, Jim, this is kind of a cool question that just happened. Is there a firecracker effect with the EFG lows? Is that what we experienced in the H period break? H period break EFG lows. Yeah, you could. Yeah, it's a minor. Pop, yeah, pop, because pop. you had. What, as you're reading this market, you got E, F, and G so close together. So what was happening? Weak buyers in F period, weak buyers in G period, because they're taking it. You know, they're just mechanical buyers at that period of time. Very mechanical buyers, and they got themselves too long, and then you hit you hit the stops for these. So it is a minor firecracker effect. All right. Thank you all, and I'll be doing one for Peter tonight. Thank you, guys. Okay, great. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, Jim. If you didn't get your question answered, you can call me, 413-695-4361. That's at our Contact Us page at our website down in the footer, um, or you can email us. So... This webinar will be posted. The recording will be up in about an hour. And our, our next webinar is next Wednesday, March 29th. And I'm going to have to, I think it's how to trade the final hour. So it's going to be at 3 p.m. Eastern Daylight Time. That's next Wednesday. You can see all our upcoming webinars at jdaltontrading.com under webinars upcoming, and that is a public webinar. The next Kickstart webinar that is a part of this series hasn't been announced yet, but we'll be sending you that information in the report email on Sunday so you'll, you can plan your week accordingly. Of course, all these webinars are recorded as well. Okay, so... I'm going to leave it there. Thank you again for being here.
great questions today. Jim and I really appreciate your participation. The questions make it that much more meaningful. So thanks all. And um, please stay in touch with us. Any questions on the Mastery Series, content, trading process, you know where to find us, and we'd love to talk with you. Okay, so have a great afternoon, evening, morning, wherever you're at, and we'll see you back here. It, we know on Wednesday, March 29th at 3 p.m. Eastern, and uh, we'll see you again for a Kickstart webinar as well. Okay, so take care of yourselves. Bye-bye.